Hey guys, it's the Andy Son here. I want to discuss uh, what happened with John these past couple days. On Sunday, he was set to uh, go to X-Fest in Dayton, Ohio, but uh, he, bought, he bought the ticket, but he didn't go. He ended up talking with my aunt and cousin, I'm not sure exactly what they were talking about, but he did go over there and talk with them for hours, at least, you know, that's what he says. When he came back, it's around 10 or 11, he said that he was, you know, going to check himself into rehab for uh, various drug addictions. Um, the only drugs that he admitted to me using was uh, just pot and tobacco, like cigars, cigarettes, that sort of thing. But uh, because of his erratic behavior, I seriously doubt that, that was, those were the only two drugs that he was using. So, you know, I was really glad that he was uh, admitting that he had a problem and that he was going to rehab. So I'm like, you know, thinking to myself, thank God he gets it. You know, this is the healing process. You know, everything's going to turn around. Unfortunately, the next day, he went to school really, really late. He said that he was going to get a ride from his friend, but he apparently never picked him up because he was already in school. It was like, he told me this like 20 minutes after school started. So, yeah, obviously his friend's not just going to come and get him because he's in school. So he did, you know, leave. I assumed that his friend picked him up, but apparently he didn't. John checked himself into school around, I think he said like 8 or 9, and uh, the uh, person who does attendance in the office said that uh, he pu she pulled John aside and, you know, asked him, you know, what was going on, and uh, he was just being, you know, really, really just defiant, you know, really, really terrible, according to uh, various accounts. Because of his really strange behavior, some people say that he was, you know, just kind of rolling his eyes back and forth and was just kind of like, you know, just almost like drunk or just like completely out of it. So the assistant principal called mom at work, told her what was going on and uh, said that uh, he had reason to believe that he was on some kind of uh, drug. He didn't know uh, what kind of drug, but he had, you know, sufficient reason to believe that he, that John was... Uh, uh, on drugs. So he told John to uh, take a drug test and uh, John refused. So uh, after some back and forthness, um, mom agreed to have the court issue a uh, drug test for John, which means that, you know, John can refuse all he wants, but they will, you know, test him for drugs by force if necessary. And uh, they tested him up in a close town here. And uh, he was completely clean. So they were wondering, you know, what was going on. But John told me earlier that, you know, he was too smart. He could, like, pass all the tests, I guess, through uh, extreme detox, like drinking a bunch of green tea, uh, cranberry juice, that sort of thing, and doing a bunch of exercising. You can uh, detox your body really quick. Now, I know that there are some tests out there that are a bit harder to do, like the, uh, I heard that there was, like, a, a hair test that I guess if you did, did any kind of drugs within a period of 30 days, they could just, like, take a little bit of hair off and uh, test it. But, uh... I don't know if you can pass that one or not. So, because of his erratic behavior, they uh, they pulled the judge out to uh, figure out what to do with him because even though he did pass the drug test, he was still acting, you know, really erratic. He was even doing that in the courtroom, according to mom. And, you know, he was being all like, eh, nah, 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 you know, you don't scare me. And the judge was, you know, super pissed at him. She sentenced him a juvenile detention center in Bowling Green until Thursday, which is his court day, for a previous infraction over the weekend with uh, that confrontation with mom. So it's not looking very good for John. He already had the cops called on him uh, two, three times, maybe even four. I've kind of lost track by now. He's already yelled out the judge that uh, is going to preside over his case on Thursday. He's in a juvenile detention center in Bowling Green, so his case isn't really looking that good. So I don't know what's going to happen, but obviously something is going to happen. I don't know if he's going to be sentenced to a, a juvenile detention center for a week or so, or maybe even a month, two months, three months, who knows. But uh, I think that, you know, it's kind of sad to say this, but I think, you know, it'll definitely be for the best. You know, it'll be in John's best interest to uh, do this because he's just, you know, we try to talk to him, we try to you know, reach out to him to try to, you know, help him, but he just won't listen. He won't listen to us. He's beginning to, you know, not even listen to his own friends. He's just, you know, on a path to self-destruction. And, you know, the best thing we could do right now is have somebody, you know, have like the, the law, you know, the court of law come in and, you know, tell him, you know, you know, this is how things are. If you don't like it, you will be arrested. You can, you know, talk off all you want and, you know, 
all you want, but we will come after you and we will arrest you. So I think that, you know, this will be a tremendous growth experience for John. And hopefully he will, you know, get his shit together and, uh, you know, finally come back. Because I've noticed uh, that he has changed since I moved back here uh, November of last year. But I kind of attributed to, you know, well, I wasn't really around him that much because I was in college before that. And then I was living with my uh, aunt and cousins. So I wasn't really around him that much. So I figured, well, you know, he's at that age. He's, you know, a bit differently now, acting a bit differently now. So I just kind of, you know, put it off. But then he started doing a bunch of, like, really, you know, weird things. And it's like, you know, this, this ain't right, you know. John's not, it's not, you know, becoming older and more mature. He's just, I don't know, it could be just, you know, that age of 17. I mean, I was there too. But uh, I wasn't nearly as defined as John. I mean, even my mom and stepdad said that, you know, I was cookies and milk compared to John. I mean, most of the time when, you know, I was his age, it was usually, you know, my stepdad getting on my case about something. I never, you know, I never picked a fight. I never, you know, went out of my way to, you know, badger people. I just pretty much, you know, kept to myself. And, you know, people always, like, got on my case about things. And, you know, then I'd yell at him. You know, John, he just goes after people. He's just, you know, like a bulldog or something. He's just like... <laughs> so, I mean, I hope that, you know, him being in a juvenile detention center, and I hope that rehab will, you know turn him back around because I know he's he's very intelligent despite all the dumb shit that he does and you know I hope that he does get into a good college and hope that he gets a good education I hope that he learned from my mistakes and you know takes it seriously and gets scholarships for God's sakes because I mean we don't have any money I mean sure we got a lot of nice things but as far as like immediate cash we have none so he definitely needs to get scholarships and you know he's He's a senior, so obviously, you know, he's a prime candidate for scholarships and things like that. He's, well, he had a uh, good GPA, so as long as he keeps his GPA up and uh, graduates, then, you know, he, he should be good. He, uh, he'll just get some scholarships for whatever university he's going into, and uh, I, I really hope he takes, you know, the whole college thing seriously, like, unlike me, because, you know, I want him to live a life, you know, without worrying about, you know, you know, you, your whole financial scheme won't completely crumble like me. You know, I pretty much live paycheck to paycheck, and I hate that style of living. I want to uh, move on from that. I'm trying to adjust my financial, trying to adjust my sources of income to where, you know, I'm not working longer or working a different job. You know, I'm trying to pre present as much value as I can in the way that I can, not just I basically don't want to be another cog in a machine, so, well, there'll be more on that later. Uh, I'm going to have to go right now because I think my mom's here, so I'll see you guys later. Bye.